twisting plant or animal fibers into yarn dates back to ancient times when people fashioned primitive spindles out of sticks. Around 500 BC, the spinning wheel was born in India. Today's factories have fully automated spinning machines that work on the same principle as a spinning wheel. This is a two ply commercial yarn, the kind factories use to weave fabric for making jeans and tops. It's made from large bales of raw cotton. Cotton comes from a plant, so naturally, some leaves and stems are mixed in with the cotton fibers. To remove them, the first machine passes over the bales and removes a 5 mm layer of cotton, then sends it through a duct system to the blending and cleaning machine. That machine processes 500 kilograms of cotton per hour. The cotton comes out evenly blended and cleaner, but still not clean enough. So it goes into a second cleaning machine, which finishes the job. Now the cotton goes through what's called a carding machine. It has huge rollers with wire teeth. They comb out the tangled fibers and line them up in parallel rows. The machine also discards any fibers that are too short to process. Next stop, the coiler. This device takes the rows of fibers and forms them into a thick and loose first stage yarn called sliver. The slivers move on to the drawing machine. It lines them up six at a time and draws them out, stretching them to form a second stage yarn. Then a machine called a roving frame stretches this second stage yarn, strengthening it by thinning it out, until it looks like this. This third stage yarn is called roving. Depending on the type of yarn they're making, it's anywhere from 3.5 to 16 times thinner than Sliver. They now stretch the roving up to 30 times thinner, which strengthens it even more. The yarn is finally finished. Now they have to transfer the yarn from all these small spools onto huge industrial size cones, 20 spools to a cone. One transfer method uses the winding machine. It winds the yarn from the first spool onto the cone. Then it automatically takes the back end of that yarn and attaches it with a knot to the front end of yarn from the next spool. It winds it onto the cone, then attaches the back end to the front end from the next spool and so on. As each spool empties, the machine automatically discards it. And while all that winding's going on, the machine's optical sensor, that white object you see crossing the screen, does a quality control check. If a portion of yarn doesn't meet specifications, the winding stops, the machine cuts off the offending portion, then reconnects the ends and resumes winding. This is air jet spinning, another method of making yarn from slivers and winding it onto giant spools known as tubes. A suction tube grabs the front end of one spool and connects it to the back end of the previous one, again with a tiny knot. Before fully automated machines like this were invented 50 years ago, all that knotting had to be done by hand. The thin finished yarn is 200 times lighter than the thick first stage yarn that came out of the carding machine. From start to finish, spinning this yarn has taken 48 hours.